So we have your blood work as far as like the whole natural thing. You were talking about how it annoyed you in your mid twenties and whatnot. But before that, I think talking about your training is kind of interesting. And I don't really talk about training on my channel very much. I think it's worthwhile, especially somebody who's achieved like a great natural physique and has kind of what many may see is or not understand as far as like training philosophies and like how you regiment it. Like you mentioned, you do like the reverse pyramid training and like low volume three days a week, you know, seems kind of counterintuitive potentially to some people who are new to the gym and just think you're supposed to like more equals better. So like, what is the general breakdown of your split? And has this remained consistent over the years that you found to work the best? Like I know you've talked about your first working set should be like your heaviest set, obviously, because that's when you have the most ability to tolerate load and you have the most like the least fatigue. And obviously at some point though, you work like you do like work up like feeder sets that are just like a minimal amount of, I don't know, warming up just to like get the area, like circulation in there and get, you know, the ready, get yourself ready for that heavy top set. Or yeah. What's like the process. So, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll like preface and say that I've been very into working out in fitness since I was 13 years old. I started lifting weights at 13 years old. I got heavy. I would be buying fitness books at the store online, ordering like there were websites of, of, of fitness people like Ross Animate way back in the day where you could order and they ship you their, their, their fitness book. I was obsessed with this stuff at a very, very young age, started doing weighted chin-ups at 14, 15. I actually achieved my first one-arm chin-up at 15 or 16 years old, which I was stoked. I was doing like 80 pound weighted chin-ups at, 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 at six, 15 or six, 15 actually. Um, so I was like on fitness crazy. And, uh, and then, you know, the thing I realized for me, you know, was that for my physique to look as good as possible, really, it just meant two things. One, having my body fat extremely low, like very low. Uh, and that all that required was being in the, the right calorie deficit and sticking to it. And then for my physique was just getting as strong as possible. And I found that, you know, I tested all kinds of things at higher volume, the 20 sets per whatever muscle group, this and that. And, and a lot of times, like what made my physique look insane was just being as strong as possible. And when that was the focus, like, let me get as strong as possible for six reps. Then my training kind of shifted in that direction. And I was like, damn, like if I cut my, if I just do three workouts a week and, you know, keep my workouts a bit more short. Um, I can hit PRs easier. I get, I recover better. I hit more personal records. If I just focus on doing two or three hard sets and just kind of dropping the exercises down to just four exercises per workout, but every exercise I'm pushing myself hard on, I hit more PRs and my physique looks better. And then the stronger I am at a, at a certain body weight, the better I look. And I just, and then when I deviate from that, my physique's not, not as, not as, not as good. So that's always been the focus. It's like end of the day, you know, and I think there's some been some good good fitness people have talked about it. Joe DeFranco, he's a strength conditioning coach for football players. But he's like, you have your four key exercises for football players. And that might've been bench and box squat and, and chin up and stuff like that. Um, and so I find that the most important thing is, you know, you have your four, four key movements, you're getting stronger every month. And if you hold like your hand to that fire, you really start to see what works best and what doesn't. And then within that framework, I'll work out three days a week. Um, two upper body days, Monday, Friday, and then legs on Wednesday. Um, and one of the, you know, you have tremendous shoulders. You have some of the best shoulders. Um, I'm well known for my shoulder development. And I think one of the things that have allowed me to build very, very good shoulders is if I do an upper body day on Monday, that's more, more chest focused and, and arm focused. Well, then when I go and hit my shoulders on Friday, my upper body is so fresh. A lot of people, they'll do chest on Monday and then two days later on Wednesday, they're hitting shoulders and some of those muscles, their chest, their triceps, some of those pushing muscles are still recovering. And I found it very hard to actually build your shoulder press up in that structure. So for me, I'll do Monday is upper body with more chest focused. And then uh, Friday is more is upper body with more, you know, shoulders back focused. And it's literally just, you know, I'll do two to three lighter warm up sets with lower reps, you know, eight reps, a bit heavier, five reps, a bit heavier, and then two to three reps, rest three minutes, boom, get that nice heavy money set for six reps, and then drop the weight 10%, hit another set six to eight. And then if I want a third set, I'll drop the weight and do eight to 10. And it's just every single set is hyper-focused on hitting that personal record. 
And it's interesting, like when you're doing seven, eight exercises, four or five sets, it's too much to literally push yourself and hit a PR and everything. It's just a lot. Like the challenge is finishing this exhausting workout. But when you like cut it in half and it's short and it's like, this is so easy. This is too easy. What am I doing? Then you're like, then you can push yourself and get those reps. So I've, I've definitely made, I definitely made my, my best gains on a bit less. Um, but that's the focus. And, and, you know, one of the benefits of, of this style is on Monday, you know, I'm hitting heavy incline, some flat bench, some arms, and I'll finish off with some, some rest, pause, rear delt work. And on that workout, even though I'm not really like hitting my shoulders intensely directly, like, yes, I'm hitting the rear delts, but the, from the pushing my, you know, a tear delt gets a lot of work. Um, from the rear delts at the end, you know, I'm, I'm getting a lot of work. And then on the Friday workout, I'm hitting heavy shoulder presses and lateral raises. And that structure is probably the best thing I've ever found for developing the shoulders. They're getting crushed very intensely once a week. And then they're getting some good, um, good, you know, indirect and some, you know, in uh, posterior direct work once a week. I found that works really, really well. Um, and you know, I, I, I personally think that there's a, a decision you have to make where it's like, I either want to have a huge, massive chest, or I want to have really freaking impressive shoulders. It's hard to really do both. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> I can, yeah, I guess that's fucking, I, for me, I think a lot of it's genetic more than anything yeah. though, but I do, uh, that's definitely in my case, like poor chest, good shoulders. Yeah. Like look at, you look at Scooby fitness the guy had massive chest. Uh, and he did train his, like he did a lot on his chest, a lot of, I think he did two thirds flies to one, to one press, whatever, but yeah. he, he hit his chest hard twice a week. Uh, but his shoulders were non-existent. Like, yeah. and, and he was probably, he was, I think self-admittedly, I don't know if he was, but he was clearly on, on, on some substances, but, um, um, he's going to be pissed if I say this, but I, think <laughs> I think he's like, yeah. well, how, how heavy is he? He's way above F, FFMI, I yeah. think, um, uh, but, but, uh, yeah, I kind of, I kind of found, cause when I was younger and doing more bodybuilding type workouts, I actually, my chest was more dominant than my shoulders. Um, I found it, it's very hard to like really, you know, really like have a huge chest and a shoulders. You have to kind of pick. And I, and I found that the shoulders, um, is a much, a much, uh, more desirable look. Hmm. So as and far it, as like choosing, like, obviously if you're doing three workouts a week, it'd be like very specific about what exercises you're allocating your like fatigue limit to. So like, did you ever try, like, presumably some people might be thinking, huh, if I put in like a fourth workout where I hit like each compound lift one more time, maybe I can squeak out like double the PRs in a week. Or if I did, I don't know, the same compound lift on a Friday that I did on a Monday, I could potentially try and squeak out another, you know, two and a half to five pounds a week that I might've not got otherwise and double the pace of the results. Like for you, how did you come to the conclusion yeah. that of selecting certain things for each day and not having overlap of other things? Because presumably if you're working out three days a week, maybe you could hit heavy incline bench twice a week. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, there's a way to do it. Um, the challenge is like if Monday you're doing more chest work. And then if you're going to do incline again, a second day it would have to be on the day you're doing shoulders on Friday. I I deep down believe if you're going for personal records on shoulder press or bench press, you need to have at least two full days of rest before. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're trying to do a shoulder a PR on chest on Monday and then a PR on shoulder on Wednesday, it's going to be tough to make those gains long-term. Like the, the, I, from my experience, like that, the muscles require 72 hours and, and the, the chest and shoulders, there's going to be overlap from, from pressing. So if you were to do Monday, big chest workout, and then you want to do another chest work on Thursday, or, or maybe you want to do shoulders on Thursday and then a chest on, 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 uh, on uh, uh, Saturday. It's harder to hit those PRs from my mm -hmm. experience. And, and you know what? And I, I, in my fitness content, I always tell people like, do not just take my word as the voice of God, test it out for yourself, yeah. try it yourself and, and see for yourself. But I, I always found like, you know, you know, even if I was going to do like heavy weighted chin-ups when I was building up my chin-ups up there, you know, if I was going to do those on, on Friday, if I want to hit some extra arms on Wednesday, I wouldn't be as strong on that, on that Friday. I needed like a solid, you know, uh, solid amount of like, so yeah, I, like, so basically two full rest days. So if, you know, I do heavy, fr uh, heavy shoulder press on, on, on Friday at the very minimum, I need Saturday and Sunday rest before I do any more heavy pushing. 
Um, of course, if you want to do a bit more leg work and you're doing some intense leg work on a Wednesday, you could probably do some lighter stuff on the Saturday. Um, do some lighter extra leg work if that's something that you want. And in my new movie star masterclass, I, I put a little bit of extra um, workouts to do on the on the, the Saturday. But that's been my experience. It's very hard. And again, like this is because of my training philosophy, you're pushing close to failure. If you're leaving two to three reps in the tank, you could probably do it. Um, but but I, I, I like pushing close to failure. I like going for PRs and maybe leaving one rep in the tank or maybe just getting that last rep that you can possibly get. And if you're doing that, you really want to have two, like, like two complete full days of rest before you're, before you're hitting, you know, any sort of pushing muscles, pulling muscles, um, or if you're doing or the legs and hitting any leg muscles. So like working sets per workout, like it sounds like it's like eight to 12 in totality. Is that accurate? Um, yeah, I've, 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 uh, oh, uh, a working set oh, for the, the full workout. Yeah. So like if you were doing four exercises and there's like a top, like your right. PR set that you're trying to get max weight on, and then maybe like a back off set, and then maybe like a third where you're going for like 12 reps or something like you're at most hitting like 12 working sets per workout. Right. Is that yeah. accurate? I'll do, uh, so on the, on the very low end, it would be eight would be the very, very low end. And I'd, I'd go up to sometimes go up to 15, 16, sometimes just for fun. I'll, I'll like do a nice period of lower volume for two, three months. And then, you know, I'm like, you know, then I'll, I'll then I'll do like a month of just doing more volume, more reps. And in the, in the beginning, you're like, damn, I feel fuller. I feel, I feel bigger. But if I keep that up, I, I, my strength kind of plateaus or, or dips down and, and I'm not as sharp. So um, like, so for example, if I go to LA for a few weeks, I'm going to go to gold's gym. I kind of want to do a bit more volume, have fun in the gym and the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, but, so I'll do anywhere from like eight to 10 sets per workout on the lower end. And that's honestly where I see some of my best PRs and thus my physique. And then on the higher end, I might do five exercises, a workout, three sets, maybe four sets for arms. And that will kind of push it higher. Um, and you know, on paper, you know, you, you, on paper, be like, yeah, that the higher volume theoretically should build you more muscle and should, should work better, um, is maybe more in line with the research. But, um, at the end of the day, the most important thing is progressive overload and whatever allows you to hit progressive overload is important. And I think that some people do a bit better with a bit more volume and some people do a bit better with a bit less volume. Um, and you know, in like my last course I released, um, there's two phases. There's a more of a, more of a, a moderate, lower, moderate volume phase, and then like a more higher volume phase to just do for a month, which I like doing. And I think that like, there's some benefit where if, if you're doing lower volume for a while, there's like a really nice benefit. If you switch to high volume for, you know, a training phase. And then if you're doing high volume, there's a nice benefit where your recovery is insane and you do lower volume, the PRs come. So I think there's a benefit to each. Um, I know that Greg Knuckles, um, who's, you know, pretty, pretty smart guy in the fitness field. He sort of credits the, the, the result to the high volume stuff. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you get stronger from low volume, but he credits most of that to the high volume stuff. From my experience, it's, it's, it's the, I, I, I'm the opposite. I'm like, no, the, the, the low volume is where the freaking is where the strength and the PRs and the physique is made. And then the higher volume is the icing on the cake. Is there any body parts or exercises that you firmly believe should be on the lower end of the rep spectrum, like six versus 12 plus? Cause it's like, you know, some people might think compounds like heavy incline bench a heavy squat to go for a PR or something like maybe you go down to, I don't know, six, like you mentioned six for your top set on incline bench. But then if you're doing arms, like, do you go for a PR at six reps on like a bicep curl or like, how do you kind of decide what is allocated the more higher rep set versus lower rep set? Yeah. Most stuff I will, I do like the, you know, six to 10 rep range. I think when I was a bit younger, I did like kind of a bit more four or five reps. I, now I do, I do prefer more of the six to 10 triceps. I like higher reps for sure. Um, go, especially on the elbows. If you're going for five, six reps, it doesn't really work. I'm usually more eight to 15, um, biceps. I, I, I kind of like, you know, six to 10 reps. Um, I find that, you know, like, it's interesting for me, if I do a bicep curl rest a little bit, like I think my biceps are a bit more fast twitch where like I'll see my, my reps go way down if I don't get enough rest. 
Whereas yeah. triceps, I, I, I'm a more slower twitch for me where I can, you know, I can pump out a set, rest a bit. And I can hit that same set, same reps easily. Whereas biceps, my biceps fatigue so fast. We'll have a, a great first set. And then the second set, I'm way weaker. Um, but, but so I, so I find that triceps, I, I tend to do better with higher reps, biceps a bit lower, but more in the, you know, five to eight rep range, as long as my elbows can handle it. Um, I find shoulders do better for a bit more on the higher end of the rep range. And yeah. especially if you're doing standing barbell presses, you know, if you're going for four or five reps, it's just so much stress on the core, the stability. If you can do like more six to eight, just it's a bit smoother. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, I, I tend to like six to 10 um, where I'll go, you know, most of it, six to eight, some eight to eight to 10, and then, then triceps and stuff. I'll, I'll go 10 to 15 and, and lateral raises, obviously shoulders, the, the, the isolation work. I like higher reps and no one, I haven't seen anyone really do lateral raises as well for six reps. It just, it doesn't really work too well. Uh, just the, the movement just naturally responds better to, I mean, if you, if you want to do like really, really short rest periods, you can do six reps, but if you're talking about like, you know, uh, doing like an actual, you know, six reps with good rest, it doesn't work that well. Um, so shoulders, try some like higher reps and then, uh, everything else kind of like sort of in that, that six to 10 rep range. Um, but, but I mean, and there's some evidence to think to suggest that, you know, that going under five reps isn't as beneficial for muscle growth, um, because you get pretty much maximum muscle fiber recruitment when you're doing a all out heavy set for five to eight reps. And there's nothing else you're gaining from doing it two reps, just you're getting lower volume, mm -hmm. um, as far as the muscle recruitment. So I, I'm generally, you know, five to eight, six to 10 reps, and then a bit higher on, on some things. Um, yeah, that, that's that's where I that's kind of what I gravitate towards. What about like descending order of priority? Because it's like when you go into the gym, you have your maximum output capability for allocating to whatever your first exercise is. So like presumably, maybe this the answer to this is whatever your weakest body part is or weakest you know exercise that you put that first, so you can improve on that the best maybe. But like for you. Is there like a tried and true, like on your Monday, you do like incline bench first, and then there's like a descending priority because as your fatigue accumulates, you can allocate less ability to, you know, beat like a heavy fucking PR on the lesser priority things. So yeah. Like, like your Monday workout versus your other two workouts. What are kind of like yeah, the, the main the, things? Yeah. The, the way that would play out for me is like, I'm very happy with my back development, even though I, I don't need to do much on my back. I, I don't do that much. My back width is very solid, like solid for my goals. Um, but like, I do want my arms to get bigger. So on some of these workouts, I will literally do, if I'm doing a couple chest exercises, I'll do biceps first. And then for my last exercise, I'll finish off with, you know, either some rows or some sternum pull-ups and that I'd rather hit the biceps fresh. Um, this is, and th this is kind of stuff that for beginners doesn't really matter. Yeah. at all um, because you have to actually you know, like train for you know three years minimum four or five years to really you know uh have different parts you want to prioritize outside of just a conventional um program um but and then you know something i'm playing around with or i have played around with a little bit was if i'm doing you know incline bench first potentially doing like a, a intense tricep movement second and then going back to to another chest exercise and and it's interesting some of the one of the things i actually you know um, came to my attention, not even that long ago, six, seven months ago was, was triceps is one of the triceps by weight is actually like your second biggest upper body muscle. Mm. It's like shoulders, triceps. I think I forget who it was memo or, or someone did analysis on, on the weight, like the muscle groups by weight and, and, uh, triceps was bigger than your, your chest and has potentially more, more muscle weight on size. You can gain to your triceps than your chest. Um, and so I'm, I'm, pretend, I'm looking at, you know, it's looking at doing a bit more triceps a bit earlier. Um, but, but, um, yeah, what if you're I, I a newbie though, like, would you tell basically everyone like on the first push workout, do you like incline bench first on leg day, do you like squats on pull, do you like deadlift or like a bent over row or something? Or like, what is kind of like, yeah, your... yeah. I would say, you know, and, and again, this comes back to your key exercises. So if your key exercises are, you know, it could be flat bench, could be incline. Let's say it's incline, uh, incline press is one of them weighted chin ups, shoulder press, and then, and then your leg lifts. I'm not a Nazi about having to do heavy squats and deadlifts to me. Mm. If, if, uh, if you want to do that, do that. I've, I, I like doing Bulgarian split squats and Romanian deadlifts. And I find that 
that, that, that does, that gives me everything I want for my legs. Um, you know, and, and I, I do, you know, I do see people that, you know, squatted 400 pounds, that living 500 pounds. And in their, if, if they're not careful with it in their, you know, mid thirties, late thirties, so just, they're not like, they're not like, do you, like, if you're, if you are obsessed about hitting those heavy, heavy squats and deadlifts, there's a lot of time there's a price to pay in your, in your, you know, forties. And yeah. I, I, have you seen it or do you disagree? No, no. Like, yeah, I think that at some point you hit a level of strength too, where it's like yeah. fucking sketch to try and keep hitting PRs on that exercise for the rest of your life. Like maybe you should allocate your, you know, fatigue resources to a whole new exercise that hits your legs. So then you can start at the bottom and like ramp up in weight rather than if you went in and hit four plates on squats, like every fucking time for like years on end, mm-hmm. you're probably gonna have some rough knees. I imagine at some point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I suffered from a, a low back injury when I was a teenager that is solved, but it's one of those things where if I, if I start being like, you know what, let me get to a 500 pound deadlift. You know, it, it, it's it, that, that, that dormant injury comes back to haunt me. And I'm like, you know what? I would rather feel mobile, feel good, you know, not have pain, feel like sharp. Um, and then, uh, then, uh, then hit a 500 pound deadlift. And then I'm having back pain when I'm driving my car. And then in 10 years, it's like, you know, so in the day, like you want to be as functional as possible. And, you know, if you look through that lens of functional has been a, a term that's been misused massively in the fitness industry but if you want to be as functional as possible great deadlifting 500 pounds squatting 450 pounds for three but now you can't really you know now you have all this back pain uh and again that doesn't mean it's going to happen like there's some nfl players that freaking hit insane numbers and and they feel good and you know but also they have they're spending you know five six thousand dollars a month on physical therapy um or or, or and massages and, and that and all these things and and so like you have to weigh that and put that into consideration but but uh you know i'm 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 happy just you know doing some romanian deadlifts some bulgarian split squats maybe some of the knees over toes stuff um and uh i think you can you know if you push yourself hard on these leg movements you can build really good legs but also at the same time um one of the things that's helped me with my upper body development my shoulder body development is that i only hit legs once a week really and At the end of the day, you know, as you're gaining muscle up to your, you know, potential, um, if you, if you train upper body hard twice a week, lower body hard twice a week, the muscle building partition, like people kind of think, oh, I'm getting all the anabolic responsive legs. I'm I'm getting all the benefit. The the legs are going to help me build my upper body. Legs are going to help you build uh, my upper body. End of the day, if, if, as you're building up to your, your muscle level, if you can gain, you know, 20 pounds, your first year, whatever, 10 pounds, your second year, five to six pounds, the more you hit those legs, the more of that muscle growth is going to get eaten up by your legs. Mm. Um, and so I find that putting two thirds of attention to upper body versus legs really helps you build a great upper body. Now, obviously if your legs you find are lacking, you can flip that, but, uh, but I mean, you know, I find that, you know, and again, if, if when someone goes on gear, um, because of the, you know, androgen receptors that, that like they, someone that's natural, I think it's, it's, if, if they fall, if you have two people, one that's natural following, um, a, a program that's two upper, two lower, one guy on gear, two upper, two lower, the guy that's natural is going to have a higher percentage of muscle growth from legs than the guy in gear theoretically, um, which I, you know, I could be wrong, but that's just kind of, you know, that's kind of my theory. Cause when, when you're, when you're, when guys are on gear, it's just like, it's easier for them to, to get the big traps, the shoulders, mm-hmm. the, the chest. I have to be extremely strategic about it where, you know, I have to, you know, really hit the incline hard, hit a lot of shoulder presses, keep other muscle groups a bit more, you know, a bit more minimal. Um, but, but, um, it's, it's an interesting, interesting theory, but, you know, um, so I do like doing more, a bit more on the upper body. And, and my sort of belief is that, you know, if you can gain 10 pounds of muscle over this amount of, amount of months, if you go too insane on the lower body, great. You're going to have six pounds, seven pounds on the lower body and a few pounds upper body. You're not going to look that much different. Mm. Um, and, you know, I talked to one of these guys, Brad Pilon, who's really, really, you know, smart in fitness. He did the book, eat, stop, eat. And, and he has even a theory where like you're, if your fat free mass index, you can reach is 22, 23, 24, maybe it's 24. Um, I think I'm close to about 20 high 23 24. Well, you can hit 24 and you can hit that with more upper body size, more shoulder size. But then if you want to try and add more muscle to your legs, 
there's a, a cost mm-hmm. and it can be hard to hold upper body size. Um, so you like, that's the kind of thing that I found fun with fitness is like, like Arnold Schwarzenegger said, he's like, you are, you know, like, it's like, what are you saying? Pumping iron. Like, you know, I'm a, like, I'm an artist, you know, you like, I'm a, I'm a crafter, I'm building the sculpture. And so like, that's what like, I, I find really fun for me is, is like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, when I was 24, 25, and I got the most accusations, I was 5'10", 160, 160, 168, 169 pounds. My legs were smaller back then. Um, uh, they're qu- quite a bit smaller, but it, it was like really easy to dial in that upper body physique. Um, and, you know, now I'm like 175 to 180, probably closer to 180, uh, 179 today. And uh, I, I um, not as lean as I was back then, but um, again, like, I'm going to look my best in the mid 170s. And yeah. so then it's all about proportion and, and, and shape. Um, you know, the idea that I'm going to get to 190 and, and, and maintain my body fat is, it's just, it, 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 I'm 30. It's not, it's, it, it hasn't, you know, I've got, and it's, this is the one thing I've learned, you know, when you're lifting for so long um, is that like, I can do the lean bulk, get up to 187, 188. And I'm like, theoretically, I'm like, yeah, if I lead down, I should be, chiseled i should hit my six percent at 180 pounds or 182 pounds it never works out once you get the body fat down to like the low level you're back in the same place you were when you're 25 hmm. um or maybe a bit a bit more if because i did put on some like but like it's it, end of the day it's like you know it's 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 yeah if i want to get down to like you know everyone's five percent bullshit this and that i've done dexa scans where i was you know six percent um and you know I did, I did a video with Greg Doucette and he gave me the benefit. He's like, yeah, you're probably, he did the calipers and the calipers had me at, you know, one test had me, the, the decks I did with him was seven. The calipers had me at nine. He was like, yeah, you're eight. So my seven on the decks is eight. My six on the decks is, is seven. Um, now the YouTube comments were saying like, oh, you're not 6%, you're 11%, 12%. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like it's, yeah. it's the, yeah. when people try and do the body fat thing, it's like, hey, if I'm 11%, yeah. And I want to get down to 5%. Where is this 10 pounds of body fat coming yeah. from? Is my, my back is very, very lean. I don't store fat on my back. My legs are very, very lean. I store the most fat on my, on my stomach. So it's like, but, but like, because my back and legs are lean, um, I, I score really well on the, if you don't look at my back and legs, I, I'm like, you're, my body fat test Dex, it looks really, really low, but, but yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of like, yeah, that's kind of a little bit of history and that's sort of where I'm at. And, and the, the one thing I'll say like not like to pat myself on the back is that there's so many people in the fitness scene to, to follow, to watch. And you watch them and they say one year, they say keto. The next year they say fasting. Then they say this workout, that workout, that workout. I've been dead ass, like consistent since I was 20, I 19 years old. I was really carving out my theory and, and getting in groove, it, getting into the groove at like 20, 21, 22, but I've been like very consistent since I was 24, 25. Yeah. I've learned some things and sprinkled in rest, pause training and, and done a little bit of like, you know, that, but like three workouts a week, boom, 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 key lifts, fasting, this and that it's been very, very consistent. And the reason it's been consistent is because I've, I've tried a ton and this is just what works for me and, you know, my clients, people going through my programs. Um, it works very, very well. And it's like the biggest bang for the buck. And my goal isn't to spend my life with fitness. Like my, 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 my goal isn't to make fitness take up so much of my life. I just want to have the best physique I can possibly have, have fun with it, let it fall in the background, build my business, have a sweet social life. And within that lens, there's literally nothing better.